Hi John, longtime fan, first time caller. A recent Crash Course video about Lord of the Flies made it very clear your deep-seated hatred for that book. Not only do I disagree, but I very much disagree. Let's talk about it. First of all, let me address Not John. You should go watch this Crash Course video so that you have a better context about what I'm about to talk about. Okay, thanks, bye. Hi, actual John. To me, most of your criticisms seem to focus on the worldview of William Golding. I think this is a fair criticism to have, but I recognize that I may not have as strong of convictions as you do. I'm able to disagree with somebody's views, but still enjoy their work. For instance, director Brad Bird has a continual theme, although I know he disagrees, of exceptionalism in his movies. It's a bit too Anne Rand for my taste, but I still love the majority of his movies. Well, forget about Tomorrowland. One of the first things you point out is the portrayal of savages or hunter-gatherers. You say that it's completely inaccurate, but I think that you might be looking at this a bit too literally. These are British children whose cultural interpretation has been influenced by propaganda. They have only been shown in their short amount of time on this planet what culture has allowed them to see. These are kids who've been reading Coral Island. It's Swallows and Amazons, a book series written by Arthur Ransom where a bunch of kids pretend to be something they are not, in that case pirates. Really what is happening is that a bunch of children are beginning a game and then are corrupted by their base instincts. You point out how the novel is influenced by Golding's time in World War II, a time where a bunch of young men were forced to be soldiers and confront the horror of humanity. Now, I agree with your sentiment that humans overall naturally want to help each other, but we also know how stupid we are, John. You might be familiar with Jane Elliott and her blue-eyed children experiment, though there is a link down below if you're not, and that showed that at least kids could start violence with something as benign as eye color. In the book, there are pockets of people who identify with what group they were a part of in boarding school. They pick fights based on age and physical appearance. It's not that out to lunch. Right now, there is an American political candidate who vilifies a whole swath of people and is being cheered for it. Now again, I don't believe that evil rests naturally in the hearts of men, but to blithely disregard evil is a little ridiculous. There are bullies everywhere, and small bits of power can corrupt. I mean, just attend one of my condo board meetings. But I believe that the truly evil character in the book is Roger, who gently goads Jack on. He's kind of like the Iago figure from Othello, not Aladdin. Although kind of like Aladdin too. He doesn't try to take on leadership, but he revels in the torture that he gets to inflict. Just like a character from The Dark Knight, he just wants to watch the world burn. We have seen in our own history those people who advocate for peace killed. Martin Luther King Jr., John Lennon, Jesus. In the book, people are persecuted for wanting peace. Now, I've been talking for a while now and haven't once said some of the other things that I love, namely the prose that Golding uses. It's lyrical and at times might be a bit too flowery, but it draws me into the story and horrifies me when violence erupts. I think Lord of the Flies follows a couple of other books that similarly dealt with authors who had experienced World War II and came back not to write specifically about war, but fictionalized their experience. The first book being one of your favorites, John, Catcher in the Rye, written by J.D. Salinger, follows a character, albeit a teenager, but suffering from basically PTSD. The other book being The Great Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut, and it was a theme that he would explore in multiple novels, but essentially a man trying to go back to normalcy when that's just impossible after what he has witnessed. Like I said before, Golding's simplistic notion of savagery is noted. I just don't think it's as big of a deal as you make it out to be. His exclusion of any female characters is odd. It's a bit of a cop-out, although, Side tangent, I don't think any piece of fiction needs to have a female character, nor does it need to have a male one. I also don't see the ending being as much of a deus ex machina as you make it out to be. I mean, it is, but instead of Zeus tromping down from Mount Olympus to right all the wrongs that he's seen, this is a confrontation between the society that they lost and the innocence that they'll never have again. In the way, the ending is a mourning of lost childhood, which is exactly what the world was going through after World War II. I find it incredibly moving. I also believe that what Golding shows is that one of humanity's greatest failings is not being able to talk to one another. There's a quote that I love that goes, they walked along two continents of experience and feeling unable to communicate. And if that is not what the majority of our Earth's problems are, I don't know what is. You don't have to like the book, John. I mean, nobody really does. 
but I think that there's more to it than what you give it credit for. And that's my small part at defending it. My name is Kyle. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday, and they're not always about defending books that I like. I also sort of co-host a podcast called Whatever This Is. A link to that on all of my social media is down in the description below. Let me know what your thoughts on Lord of the Flies are down in the comments, a place where we can start a new society. But I am bringing a stick sharpened at both ends.